All right. Um, I did a series on zener diodes, but I didn't touch the subject, which is um, when you um, change the temperature of a zener diode, its zener voltage changes as well. And you can have something called a negative coefficient, where if the temperature rises, the uh, volts go down, or if the temperature rises, the volts go up, that would be a positive temperature coefficient. So if they go up with temperature, positive, if they go down with temperature, negative um, temperature coefficient. And Zener diodes are very odd. Uh, they have a characteristic where the amount of voltage change with temperature is different for different Zener diodes. So if Zener diodes are lower than 5 volts, they have one type of thermal uh, properties. If they're above 5 volts, they have a different set of uh, thermal properties, okay? And I think I have a better, better graph than this one. So let's see if we can show this on the screen here. So if your Zener diode is a 5 volt Zener diode, if it's less than that, you have a negative temperature coefficient. If you have a Zener diode that has a Zener voltage higher than 5 volts, it has a positive coefficient. And it's usually in percent per degree C, and this, you know, it's all the way up to about 0.1 percent per degree C, and then all the way down to minus 0.1 percent per degree C. And then something magical happens around 5 or 6 volts is that the temperature coefficient becomes zero, uh, that the, the, the Zener voltage doesn't change with temperature, which is exactly what you want, right? That's like the perfect thing. But there are no perfect 10 volt Zeners or there are no perfect two volt Zeners. There are only perfect five or six volt Zeners. And um, it's a very strange thing. And it has to do with the physics of Zener diodes. Below 5 volts, they actually operate in the Zener effect, or tunneling effect. And above 5 volts, they operate in avalanche mode. So different physics depending on where you are on the curve, all right? And so what we want, though, in an instrument like this, we want it to be very stable with temperature. So we want to have that perfect diode. We want to use that diode that has no temperature coefficients at all, all right? So let me show you that. All right, this is my Zener diode, and handwritten on a note inside of the instrument, it says 6.3252. So that diode is magic at 6.3252. That's where this company spent time and energy characterizing diodes, and they characterized this diode and figured out exactly where you should operate this diode. One of the reasons these boxes are expensive because they took the time and energy to, to make perfect diodes, right? They, they, they bought a bunch of diodes and then they characterized them all, right? All right, so let's go ahead and put a voltmeter on that Zener diode, okay? And let's go up and see what he's operating at right now. And it should be 6.3252 and at 6.3251, uh, okay? So let's uh, make my voltmeter a little more sensitive. I'll put it on six volt, uh, six, uh, six and a half digit resolution, and then we will take a tool, we will adjust it, okay? And we're gonna be adjusting what's known as R1. I've labeled them so R1 is up there, and, and these R numbers match the, um, I'm going to twiddle this one. These, these numbers match the uh, schematic, which I'll show you in a bit. But let's adjust this to uh, 635, let's see, what is it? 6.3252, 6 6.3251, okay? So we want to move it just, just a tiny, tiny bit. All right, let me get my tool on the geometer. Yeah, going the wrong way. Let's see here. Oops. Three, two, five. Go 
I'll go this way. There, oop, went too far. Okay, I'm going to say that's close enough. All right, so now we should be in its happy range. Okay, so that's, that's what R1 does, okay? Um, R2 is the offset voltage for this uh, amplifier. R2A is an offset voltage for the sense line for ground. R3 is where you set one volt, and R4 is where you set 100 millivolts. Um, and yeah, that's all there is to it. So I've, I've labeled those, and uh, I have replaced the capacitors. All right, so I found some capacitors that I had laying around. I didn't have to go buy any. So I've replaced, uh, I've replaced these two, that one, these two, and that one. So everything had 1975 capacitors in it. Now they have, <laughs> I don't know, 1990 capacitors in it, something like that. I don't think these are quite very new either, but they're better than what was in there for sure. All right, even though I did take them out and they did measure okay, so yeah, yeah, go figure. So let's see here, what else should we do? All right, so like I said, in order to calibrate this thing, you adjust this for um, a particular range, and then you need to calibrate another thing, which is not on camera. Yeah, there we go. So there's these, uh, adjustments right here for one volt, two volts, four volts, six volts, eight volts, and 10 volts. And each one has a separate, uh, each one has a separate adjustment. So you have to go through, you have to go through all of that. So let's, let's see how we're doing here. Let's, uh, let's move things around a bit. All right, so the first thing you want to calibrate is you want to calibrate with this set to zero and this set to 10, and that will give you exactly one volt. Everything else is zero, and that will give you one volt, all right? And so you go up to your voltmeter way up there. Sorry, it's way up there. But uh, we can adjust R3, all right? And we will, there we go. We will adjust R3 to give us exactly, exactly one volt. All right. All right, now we come back down here. All right, and this is one volt. We can check the, we can check the other, we can check the other uh, values here. Here's, here's a uh, 0.8. And what I found is if you uh, kind of split the difference, I sort of like positive numbers. So right around 0 0.8, I'm going to make this perfect. Okay, right around 0 0.8. And then if I go to 9, it looks good. If I go to 10, it's a little high, but everything else is looking good. 7, a little low. So you're starting with splitting the difference. There's also some offset voltages to set. So obviously these need some offset measurements as well. Now we're gonna go to these other, these other values over here. Uh, this is our zero. So yeah, 0 0.04 millivolt, that's a pretty good zero. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust the other ones. All right, so we're going to, um, now have all these zeros. We're going to set this to one and then we're going to reach inside and we're going to adjust the one, the one potentiometer. All right. And all right. And then we're going to put this on two. We're going to adjust the two potentiometer. Got my tool on the uh, slot there. There we go. All 
Okay, then we're going to go to four and adjust that one. We're going to go to six and adjust that one. I'm going to go to eight. Just that one. And 10. All right, Let's see how we did. And what's oh, a big glare, isn't it? There we go. How about that? Okay, so 10, 9. A little bit of settling time. Oops. Eight. Seven. Six. There's a chopper stabilized amplifier and it's got a nice filter on it. Five. Four. Three, two, one. So yeah, uh, so we can put this on one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and six. That's all the digits I've got. So I'm putting in 1.23456 and it comes out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's pretty darn good. <laughs> that is pretty darn good. All right. So very cool instrument. Uh, fairly easy to calibrate uh, and uh, pretty straightforward. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, play with this tomorrow. Again, it's cold in the garage, so I'm going to wait wait till this thing's, even though it has a zero temperature coefficient, it's still best to calibrate it at about 70 C. Um, and uh, we will um, button it up and put it on the shelf. So yeah, it's working good. Okay, and just a quick look at the uh, crude schematic that's all hand-drawn and not very well at, at that. But basically, uh, this is the current source right here, these two diodes, uh, two transistors in this diode. This diode sets up a voltage. That voltage across this resistor sets up a current. So this is the uh, R1 that you adjust to set the current. The current goes through the magic, the magic zener. This is the magic zener. All right, so that sets up your reference voltage. Your reference voltage goes into a, a amplifier, and that amplifier has a big feedback path. And that feedback path goes through all of the switches on the front panel, okay? And it goes all the way from 20K to 0.2 ohms. And uh, all of those are decades of resistors, and that's the loop that you uh, set, and then you get accurate volts on the output. Uh, the output comes through a emitter follower here to make it nice and stiff. And uh, yeah, this this uh, diagram is for the MV106. It has a 10 volt range, a 100 millivolt range, and a 10, 10 millivolt range. Mine is the MV100, does not have the 10 millivolt range. Otherwise, the schematic, the schematic is the same. So here are the magic things that you tweak. Uh, number one sets that uh, reference voltage. 2 is the offset voltage for the uh, op amp here. Uh, 2A is the offset voltage for the uh, ground sense line. Make sure that's not introducing any errors. 3 sets uh, uh, the 10 volt range and 4 sets the 100, 100 millivolt range. And that's all there is to it. And then uh, the one, two, four, six, eight, ten things I'm tweaking are these. There's individual uh, resistors here. Let me show you a picture of that. So they give you a nice picture here that shows you uh, one, two, four, six, eight, and ten. And in my instrument, it looks like this. The uh, the way I had it on camera was the uh, knob was on the outside and uh, 
that's the orientation, tells you exactly what to do. So this, all the, all the calibration uh, steps that you go through are in the manual. All right, uh, that will end the video. Uh, this is the EDC Electronic Development uh, Corporation. This is the MV100 uh, voltage, voltage standard. Thank <laughs> you.